Today we're checking out this, Spotify's biggest fail, or is it really? Come check it out with me. This is the Spotify car thing. This model is Spotify's second version of their Spotify car thing. This version launched in April of 2021 and actually had some differences between their version one development builds and this one. For example, it actually lacked a battery. Now on screen here, we can see the version one of their Spotify car thing, but let's get back into what we have here. And by September of 2022, it was discontinued by Spotify entirely. Luckily, I was able to purchase one before they went out of stock let's check it out after waiting a bit for the package to arrive we're greeted with this small box the packaging is all cardboard and paper but there was a wrap of plastic around it now let's see what's actually inside this little box unboxing the device we're greeted with the spotify car thing the manual cleaning cloth a dashboard mount with adhesive backing two rubber adhesive cable clips for rooting the usb cable a dual usb a power adapter rated for 5 volts at 3.1 amps three foot long braided usb c to usb a cable a magnetic mount for the dashboard vent and cd tray mount as well as the vent and cd tray mount and that's all we get with this moving on to device specs and hardware features its dimensions are 124 by 64 by 20 millimeters, weighs around 90 grams. Its display is a 3.97 inch 480 by 800 resolution. For input, it has its touchscreen, a back button, a dial slash select, since you can click on the dial. The dial controls the volume output of the phone, a USB-C for power. The top four buttons seem to be playlist shortcuts. You can add them by holding the button down of what's currently playing. And if I wanted to save its preset too, and click and hold and it saves it to that specific preset and button 5 is just your settings and mute button it also has microphones its cpu is an am logic s905 d2 it has 500 megabytes of sd ram 4 gigabytes of emmc built-in storage has bluetooth 4.2 supports spp br edr and ble its power input is 5 volts max at 1.2 amps it also supports its Spotify voice assistant through the microphone. Hey Spotify, decrease volume. Hey Spotify, play Eminem. And it's made of plastic. Retail price was $89.99 USD. Let's get on with setting up the device. Now, fair warning, this does need a Spotify premium account to even get past the setup page. Unless you hack the Spotify car thing and remove its premium check, you're not able to get past that setup. We'll be talking about that later on. But other than that, the setup is pretty straightforward. After plugging the device in, clicking the top right button to skip the power check screen, we're left with the page to scan the QR code. During the setup process, I did come across the first issue. Now, if you're using an Android device, it needs to have at least Android 8 or Oreo installed to set up the device. But we will be getting back to that in testing. Now, I don't know if it was just being buggy for me, but I did have to go through the setup process twice for it to actually pair. But just skipping through the basic stuff like connecting to your car with either Bluetooth or plugging in via the 3.5 millimeter jack and mounting it using one of the included mount hardware you're brought to a menu with all your music. Now, 500 megabytes of RAM is not a lot. The Pi Zero actually has 512 megabytes of RAM, which gets me thinking of something. But before that, let's get into device testing. All right, yeah, so we can see here that I have it right here. I mean, in the, um, the clock and everything is right here. So unless somebody used the mount here, which we see here, um, and I just have it plugged into this little Bluetooth receiver right there. So it ties into the radio. I connect my phone to it and uh, yeah. So like if I were to use, so we can see here that here, I mean it like now we're using the vent mount. I mean, it's kind of weird in the placement, but now we have access to the clock and everything. But in my testing, after setting this up, you do still need a device with Android 8 to actually run the Spotify car thing. But if you hack it with a custom firmware, it bypasses the need for this. Again, a tutorial will be coming out soon on hacking the Spotify car thing. Alrighty, we just got this message saying you can use the Spotify car thing to control playback for other media services. I mean, after we did it. Also, it also seems like 
the sensor is right there for light and if we cover it just turn the flash on off real quick you guys can't really see it on camera but it's actually a lot darker and then we just make it a lot brighter now the ambient light sensor does seem to work pretty well the only thing i don't like is we can't manually set the brightness and here we are setting up the spotify car thing on an iphone see this one actually allows phone calls so we have the settings right now we'll see that we can use phone calls so according to spotify's thing for car phone calls it's only using the information not the actual microphone on the spotify car thing hey spotify call john the spotify voice assistant actually does not work with siri or bixby it seems to only limit itself to the spotify app but it still can do things like hey spotify play eminem play different music change the volume repeat songs skip songs it can do stuff like that but if you go hey spotify text mom hello doesn't do anything because it's only limited within the functionality of the Spotify app. So all in all, my testing has concluded that the Spotify car thing is more of a shortcuts thing rather than a car play or even something that can use with like Siri. And then we have our dial button, which pressing and hold it like here we have the select button, which is cool because then you can see the next tracks and the dial is like super glitchy. I don't know if it's mine, but the dial is super glitchy. And the last thing I wanted to touch upon was playing local music. Okay. And here we have Spotify playing on of our Android device. Now, if we just switch over to regular downloaded music, we can see that it updates but it does not bring over any artwork. It's playing, it's playing local music, whatever. If we kill the Spotify application, we're gonna notice it just straight up disconnects it. Spotify for some reason needs to be running for it to play. Now I wanted to give a brief year update on using this so I can list out some pros and cons. I still use it to this day. It's nice to use when you wanna skip your music or use the voice assistant to play certain songs that's not on your playlist. But in my opinion, that's all it's really good for. I will be soon switching this out for either some things we'll be seeing in the alternatives or maybe a DIY solution that we may build or may not. Currently on Spotify's website, they only list the support and guides for this Spotify car thing. Before they sold out, they were on sale for $29.99 with a retail price of $89.99 USD. The device is currently being sold for right around $1 to $200 US on eBay. Now, would I recommend going and getting one? No. Since you can use a phone or your phone itself as a smart infotainment system for your car, I would not recommend going to spend $1 to $200 to get a Spotify car thing. I wanted to check some sites like Reddit to see how other people are using their Spotify car thing. So jumping over to Reddit real quick. Now this is the car things hacked Reddit page. Now most of these that you'll see here are tethered hacks, meaning that they need to be set up and run specific scripts for them to be actually able to run not be standalone and use it that way. For example, this person is working on Apple Music playback synchronization plugged in and they got it working here. So they're on their computer and they have it plugged in. Here, somebody ported SM64EX for, to be able to run emulated games. This person is using as a monitor. So people are using these hacked in tethered jailbreaks. And they're trying to get more usability out of it. As for non-hacked devices, like for example, this dude's just using it at his desk. Small reminder, you still have to have it connected to your phone for it to play out no matter what, even if it's plugged into your computer sitting at your desk. So a lot of people are just trying to find some use cases for it, which moves us to the pros and cons. Pros with this device, it's nice to have a small controller for music it's great for cars without any headset display or smart infotainment system. It comes with a dual USB-A car charger and it's pretty easy to set up. But the pros really end there. The cons of the device is that it needs Spotify Premium unless you bypass that. That's a laggy interface, no UI customization, and no extra functionality like clock or maps. The large dock covers part of the screen. You can't answer calls with Android phones, but you can with iPhone and use the inbuilt microphone. You need to have a phone connected to both the Spotify car thing and a Bluetooth adapter 
or the car itself to actually use this. When playing local music, the art doesn't even transfer over onto screen. Now most of you are probably looking at the cons and saying, eh, it's not really worth it, but I wanted to list out some improvements to the device. I know the Spotify team is not really supporting this anymore, but for anybody watching and is currently working on this, here's some features I'd like to see. The ability to connect the Spotify car thing straight to a Bluetooth adapter or the car itself, allowing the user to only have to connect to the Spotify car thing to play the music. Add some customization features in the interface, ability to take calls via Android and use its microphone, screen mirror maps. If you have maps on your phone, kind of like Android Auto, just bring it onto the Spotify car thing and have such features like a screensaver with like a clock or other screens rather than just whatever's playing currently on your music. And all in all, it brings us to our final thoughts. Now, the purpose of this device was not to add smart functionality to your car, but a way to use Spotify hands-free. Did Spotify do a good job in the execution? No. The remaining selling point was to iPhone users since the Android functionality is less than the iPhone. This did get me thinking, is it cheaper to buy a mountable one off Amazon or eBay, or better to consider making your own? It could be cheaper just to buy a used Android phone, a mount, SD card, and either a car charger, or an FM transmitter with a charger to run it that way. Of course, you can probably get a better phone than the HTC One M8, flash that to a newer OS, unplug the battery, or we can change that in settings, and leaving a plugged in to see, and leaving a plugged in could do the same thing. For those with premium accounts, connecting the device to Wi-Fi every so often to download your music is needed. Same with updating maps. But all in all, for around 30 USD, it was a niche little toy for one's car. But for its retail price, no, I would not say it's worth it. A tutorial on how to hack the device will be released soon. If an upcoming hack tutorial does not provide enough fixes, I'll start looking into a better DIY solution. So stay tuned for that. Let me know if I missed anything down in the comments section below, and let me know what I should check out next. Again, don't recommend going out and buying one. There are better alternatives. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next one.